I want to show you this cool little CNC hack that I just figured out with my CNC router that is going to make setting my X, Y, and Z zero a lot faster. You see I have these grids cut on my alt mill CNC router and these grids are four inches apart in the X direction and four inch apart in the Y direction. Now you also notice each grid line is marked. So this is Y minus 40 from the machine home position. So we have Y minus 48 and then we have X4, X8, X12. What I did was take full advantage of the program that I wrote for that grid. You see this grid starts at the machine home in the back left corner of the of the CNC and so I'm getting ready to make some hot plates here and I said why do I need to set my X, Y, Z to two different locations when I can cut both of these things at the same time even though they're different and here's the crazy little hack that I did here is my alt mill machine it is uh, 48 by 48 that's the job setup that I did and then what I did was simply let that be my origin for my job set up on my software and I just positioned the project on the grid points. So I got one set right there and I got the grid lines numbered on the machine so I can tell you right now that the corner of this guitar hot plate that's it right there. This is my my surfacing rectangle. It's actually located right there and I know that it's located at Y minus 36 and okay X12 so now it's this corner right here Y minus 36 and if I follow this grid line down X12 and I know where the other one is because I placed it right there on that corner so that is going to be X28 and also on Y minus 36 there's my X28 right there. So I don't have to set my X and Y for these two pieces. So basically, I never have to set my X, Y position again. Whether I'm doing multiple projects or just one project, all I have to do is set the project piece on the CNC where a corner is on a known grid intersection and I have my X and my Y locations known for each one of those grid points and all I have to do is design the project up in the Vectric software based on that grid program and my zero point will always be set. This will come in extra handy when it comes to doing 3D projects because if you grind or cut away most of the material and you lose your XY then you are going to have a problem, right? Because you won't be able to recover it off the corner of the project. I just send the machine home, which I'll do right now. I'm going to hit the home button. And once she goes home, now we just zero, X, and Y. My X and Y is set. It's in the back left corner. Now all I have to do is simply do my Z off of one of these pieces. And now when I do the surfacing of both materials, I've got the, the rectangles to do the surfacing around both of them. And that just means one surfacing program for two projects. Oh, this is such a cool hack. The only caveat to this setup, though, is when the, you start the G-code program, the machine will always go back to its XY0 start position, which is the machine home. Then it's going to come all the way forward to its tool path, and then it will return all the way back to the machine home. So if you need to reduce that travel time, then you may not want to do it. I just find that this is going to be a lot easier, especially when you're doing one-off jobs. But if you are doing production, this may not be a good technique. So we're going to just send this thing home. Well, we're going to load the program, or start the program. All right, spindle's going to turn on. It's going to come forward. So now as soon as it's done with this one, it's going to jump over to the next piece, just like I have it in the program there. Two separate projects. And if you are not sure about surfacing project material, I got a video you want to watch. Uh, that will be linked down in the description. You always want to follow the technique that I'm following here. You know, watch. This bit is going to go all the way off the material, then it'll move back, and then come back across, all the way off the material, then it'll move back. 
I never have to set my X, Y again. I can just use the grid design in my software, place my raw material at one of the intersection points, and then design it in that program, and then make sure that I put the proper corner in the proper intersection point on the machine and my zero x y zero will always be known it'll be the machine home if this was an interesting tip or added a little bit of value to make your setup a little bit easier then maybe you can give me a thumbs up while we're here i might as well show you the actual cutout of the project so this is ultimately what i made these two hot plate holders. You know, you put this on the table and you put a hot pan there and it saves from burning the table. It's a little pine cone looking thing and a guitar. These were made out of scrap wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the two router bits that cut this out. So the first bit is the one I want you to really pay attention to. It is the Badger roughing bit, a 1 8 roughing end mill from IDC Woodcraft that is designed to do all the heavy lifting when it comes to CNC router work such as cutting out all this stuff. And it doesn't take the workload or put the workload on your standard down cut bits. So we're gonna rough these out with the roughing bit and then come behind it and just do a cleanup pass with the standard down cut end mills. And the benefit of that is the down cut end mills last a lot longer because they're doing a lot less work rather than doing all the hogging out. That's what roughing bits are designed for. So I'm gonna let you watch this first cut out and then we'll wa you'll watch the finish run Two minutes and both of these have been cut out, roughed out. This is going to be interesting. Watch this. And here is the first project that we are cutting out with the Badger. The material is walnut and it is 5 by 10. The thickness of it is a half an inch. And the Badger is currently running at 150 inches per minute, 19,000 RPMs, and the depth of cut is a quarter inch. And you can see how quickly this thing is running through this material on these two passes. So we are more than halfway through the cutout of this project. Now it's just going to do the final outline of this hot plate that I am making. Which is what you can do with scrap wood. It's just a piece of wood that's been sitting around for about five years. And we have one more pass and this one is done. And we are just under a minute at this moment. So this is how fast this router bit can do all your roughing and work to get these projects cut out. So here's my favorite one. This is the second one. It is cut right behind that first job. And this is the pine cone type of hot plate that I'm just making. And it's cutting out the insides of the pine cone. And you can see how fast it just works through this material. This is really satisfying to watch a project cut out this fast on the machine. Now I probably could have gone, I'd say the, probably the full depth of the project with this bit. Watch this. This is the best part of this whole thing when it starts doing the profile cutout. It just, kind of dances around the whole project just like that. Super, super fun to watch. And that, my friend, is the Badger. Two projects, two minutes. Now that was pretty impressive. Now you know if you use a regular 1 8 bit to cut that, you would snap it because it just can't handle the chip load that's being applied here. Chip load is basically how much chips each flute can handle or each tooth can handle and with the badger the roughing bit it just kind of chews at the wood it has a very high chip load so that's what makes this thing last as long as it does and do the work that it does the feeds and speeds that i ran this with were 150 inches per minute quarter inch depth of cut with a 1 8 bit and 19,000 RPMs. Now let me tell you why that quarter inch depth of cut and that speed rate 150 inches per minute is so significant is because number one this traditional setting for router bits for when you're new is half the diameter of the bit. In other words 1 8 diameter that means that your depth of cut would be a sixteenth of an inch deep and your standard feed rate would be maybe about 70 inches per minute. We're going four times the depth and twice the feed rate. 
So that's what this bit, the Badger, does. And if you don't have it, you definitely want to get it in your arsenal, especially if you're making projects where you're cutting out a lot of material. I will link this down below, this particular bit right here, the Badger, which you should probably have in your arsenal too, if you don't have it already. I've offset the lines of the project just a little bit because the Badger will leave a rough cut. So now I'm going to show you the finish pass with the 1 8 down cutter, where it is running at 20,000 RPMs at 100 inches per minute, and it just cleans it up really quick. With that thickness, it just won't do that much work, and that means the cutting blades will last a lot longer. I'll link this bit down below as well. So anyway, enjoy, and I will see you after this cut. And here we go with the 1 8 down cutter. This bit, I am running it at 80 inches per minute, and I'm going the full depth of cut, which is a half an inch. And that leaves the whole surface nice and clean all the way down. I don't have those little step marks that you sometimes get on router bits. So you see it's running quite a bit slower. Uh, my, my down feed, my plunge rate is a little bit too low for this. But that's what it was, so I'm going to bring that up to 60 inches per minute. But even so, this is another quick process for the cleanup cuts. So we are more than halfway through on this project now. You see the chips are a little bit different on this, a little more chunky, and that's because it is cut in the full length of it. So you're getting these nice little long chips that are coming off the bit, whereas the Badger, if you look to the left of the screen, you can see it's a little more powdery. The Badger leaves that kind of uh, chip that you get off of it. It's designed to do that. It's more dusty, if you will, but they're still chunky. The Badger should leave chips that feel like sand if you roll them in your fingers. So we are, well, about a minute, 30 seconds into this now. And again, we are almost done with this. Now I probably could have had another 30 seconds to a 45 seconds faster on this had I had my plunge rate a lot better. But it's nice to just come in and do a nice little cleanup job on this project just like this. Another satisfying little cut when it comes in and you see those chips fill up. So we don't have much more to go, maybe one more minute on this entire project. These are nice little projects to make with the scrap wood that you have. And I am going to create a video on this so that you see how I quickly developed these two concepts of these little hot plates. They were really, really quick to design up. <laughs> the thing that took the most time was actually setting up the project on the spoil board. It's always a lot of fun to watch your CNC cut out projects like this, and especially when it's cutting them out as fast as it did with the hyperspeed roughing end mill, the Badger, and then coming in behind it and getting a nice cleanup pass. In this video, we covered two things. First, we covered the little hack that I came up with of using the machine home as my XY zero point and then using the design that cut the grid on the machine as the, the reference that I use where I set the project material in the project on a grid intersection and then I just simply carry it out and make sure I put the project on that proper grid intersection. And that is always the zero point for the XY. I never have to set it. Now, if you found that to be an interesting tip, then definitely give me a thumbs up. And if there's other ways that you can set your XY without using the probe, then definitely give me a comment down below. Maybe how you set up your work offsets, something like that. I would love to know, and people who read the comments would love to know, and they will learn from your experience as well. We also covered the Badger, the hyperspeed roughing end mill that really works through projects really fast. Two minutes to cut these two out and then another two to three minutes to do the finish work. This whole thing about these roughing end mills, number one is they can go really fast. They have a very high step over rate. You can go much deeper and you just hog out that material. They're designed to remove material very quickly and they will do all the hard work so that your standard up cut, down cut, compression, spiral end mills only do cleanup passes that will spare the life of them and make them last up to 10 times longer. I want you to think of it like this. A roughing end mill is just like a bunch of teeth and it just keeps biting away at the wood. Where your, your spiral end mills, they're kind of like a knife blade. If you've worked with kitchen knives, which you have, those blades wear out pretty quickly. The same thing happens to your 
down cut or up cut spiral end mills. So you want to spare the life of them. And that's why these hyper speed roughing end mills work really good. You can get all kinds of these bits at IDC Woodcraft. You can get the Badger, the Beast, the Hog, the Ripper, and the Slayer. They are all different sizes, eighth inch, quarter inch, um, three eighths inch and half inch, and we have long ones as well. So I will link those down below in the description of this video. I do suggest that you get the Badger and the Beast into your arsenal and start working with them. You'll find that they work a lot better and make your projects go a lot faster. So with that, if this video was interesting for you, like I said, then please give me a thumbs up, comment down below. If you got some value out of this, you might like some of the other videos I put out. And so you might want to subscribe to the channel as well. With that, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, the company that provides you with the CNC router pits to carve out your amazing CNC projects. And I will talk to you in the next video. IDCWoodcraft.com